Hi, and everyone, and welcome to Sports Broadcasting Center, along with Noah Telford and Michael Noble, and I'm Ryan Donziger. Mike Trout has played in just one playoff series in his remarkable 10-year big league career, and that was eight years ago, but this might be the year. Trout and reigning American League MVP Shohei Otani make a run in October for the Los Angeles Angels. Trout, a three-time MVP, is putting up historic numbers, and Otani continues to impress at the plate and on the mound. Earlier this season, Otani hit his 100th career home run, becoming just the second player in MLB history with at least 100 homers and a batter at 250 strikeouts at a, at the picker, as the pitcher. The other player was Babe Ruth. The Memphis Grizzlies might be a small market team, but they plan to do whatever it takes to keep John Morant in the fold. The NBA All-Star and Most Improved Player in 2022 is eligible for a five-year maximum contract extension. Grizzlies general manager Zach Kleiman says he intends to keep the team's core in place, as well as making sure that Morant stays in Memphis for a long period of time. Morant ranked ninth among players in league merchandise this season and led the team to its highest playoff seeding ever at number two in the Western Conference before being eliminated by the Golden State Warriors. The sale of the Denver Broncos could reach $5 billion, but there is no shortage of interested billionaires to buy the NFL franchise. Team president Joe Ellis says the new owner number one, number one priority will be building a new $2 billion dome stadium, allowing the Broncos to host the Super Bowl for the first time. Chelsea, the Premier League soccer team, sold for $3.1 billion in May, the most ever paid for a team in any sports. NBC's Sunday Night Football, the number one show on television for 11 years in a row, has named their first female lead to host Football Night in America. Maria Taylor de debuted on the studio show last year as a co-host with Mike Tirico, but will take over this season with Tirico moving into the booth to handle play-by-play. -play. Taylor joined NBC Sports last year after failing to work out a contract with ESPN. The NFL kicks off, 2020, kicks off the 2022 season on NBC September 8th, with the defending Super Bowl champion Rams hosting the Buffalo Bills. We are just months away from the World Cup in Qatar. The United States men's national team will be back on the global stage after missing out in the 2018 World Cup in Russia. The U.S. faces England in its opening match. The two nations have formed quite a rivalry over the years. In 1950, the United States pulled off one of the greatest upsets in World Cup history, winning 1-0 over the heavily favored Brits. Only four Americans returned from the disappointing 2018 team, including Chelsea star forward Christian Pulisic. This will be the 11th time the men's U.S. men's national team has qualified for the World Cup, with its best finish coming in 1930 in the semifinals. The college football team is fast approaching, but the Southeastern Conference, or the SEC, is looking ahead to the 2025 when Oklahoma and Texas join the SEC, making it a 16-team new super conference. The SEC has a goal of every school in football visiting each of the other 15 schools at least once every four years. Meanwhile, the Big Ten plans to reshape its future, scheduling the alignment and championship arrangement. Beginning in 2023, the Big Ten is discussing elimination of divisions and staging a football title game between the top two teams in the 14-team conference. That's it for a busy day in sports. For my co-anchors, Ryan Donziger, Noah Tolfer. And Noah Tolfer, I'm Mike Noble. Thank you for watching Sports Broadcasting Center.